Today we've got a great malicious compliance story with the cable company. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, teacher parent meeting. Hi everyone, I lurk most of the time, but I've got a little story to tell. I don't really know if it's malicious compliance, but, well, you tell me. First of all, I'm typing on my phone and English is a second language to me, so please excuse any mistake and point them out, I like to learn. To the story, a few moons ago, when I was a young teacher full of energy, I had the dubious pleasure to be the head teacher of a class of 13 year old kids. One of them, let's call him A, was charming and intelligent but did absolutely nothing, no work at all in class. Of course, his results were, let's say, poor. I tried to talk to him but to no avail. He wouldn't tell me anything about his lack of motivation. I tried to contact the parents but the phone number they listed was wrong and they never replied to my written messages. So imagine my surprise when I saw A and his mom waiting at my door during the parent-teacher meeting. The mom seemed really cold towards A and it was apparent it was definitely not a good moment for him. Before I could begin to talk about him, the mom told me, I don't care what you're going to tell me about his grades, he will be a surgeon and you will give him the grades he needs to accomplish that. Quite taken aback. I told her that it was a wonderful job indeed, but also a very difficult one. And with long years of study, and A seems to already be fed up with school, maybe she should change this focus to something less scholarly and a little more hands-on where he could bloom. She answers with, You didn't listen. He will be a surgeon like his father and grandfather. And of course, I understood why A didn't work at all. He didn't want to be a surgeon, and his mom was so horrible, the only solution he found was to stop working altogether. After a little back and forth where I said to A that he should be working in school, even if he didn't want to become a surgeon, the mom began to glow red at those words. She asked me if it was possible to become a surgeon while doing an apprenticeship and without going to medical college. I laughed and blurted out, yes madam, it's called being a butcher. She flew in a rage, got up, yelled freak you and stormed out with the poor kid. The headmaster was within earshot and went to ask me what happened. When I told him, he laughed and told me he would call her to talk with her. Sadly, I learned a few years ago that A ended things at 17. He probably couldn't bear the pressure. Here's my little story. As I said, I'm not sure it's malicious compliance. She asked a question, I answered, and she didn't like it. It was a bit of a fun story, but man, you just walk away from it sad and shaking your head and hoping that in a lot of institutions like these schools, if you see abusive behavior like that, hopefully it gets reported. That said, our next story is, make you cry? Not sure if this counts here, but a creepy jerk asked me to, so I did. I, 23-year-old female at the time, now 32-year-old female, was at a conference in downtown Atlanta. Me and my colleagues were all five of us women of color and members of a fancy research fellowship that gave us the privilege to be learning at this amazing conference. Conferences like these are basically educational vacations. Anyway, we'd flown halfway across the country from a rural area to this super fun city and after a day of speaking engagements, we decided to go grab some drinks and snacks at one of the many bars in the nearby area. We found a table, each got a beer or cocktail, and we're all chatting about what else we might do with our time in the city. Enter the creep. A guy, 35-ish male, comes up to our table right behind me to chat us up. I'm the smallest of the group, and he started by placing his hands on me and then my friend's shoulders, and while he spoke, his hand eventually landed on my lower back. I internally cringed through it because 2015 was a different time, and unfortunately I was slightly more tolerant of drunk men being creeps. For the moment, it was professional decorum, I don't know. He jovially asks what we're all doing here in Atlanta, trying to chat up the table. This is where I should mention we're Native American, so not something you normally see in downtown Atlanta. Not dressed in traditional regalia or anything, but facial features and skin tone, maybe accents? Anyway, he seems harmless because he obviously can't separate the five of us, and he only has his hand touching my lower back where only I can feel. Some of his friends, holding their beers, come over for this fun interaction. My colleague tells him we're all here for a conference and we're presenting research. We're going to be counselors and therapists someday. She's a mama bear and she yells over the cacophony, 
We're going to be therapists. He hears that and says, Oh, therapists? So you know how to make people cry? They all laugh. I haven't said anything so far, and he's been freaking rubbing my lower back. I cocked my head back looking into his eyes. Yeah, maybe someday. Cute as freak. He says, Try me, sweetheart. I look him in the eye, stone-faced, and say, Tell me about your relationship with your father. Creep went stone solid. He dropped his leathery hand off my back. His eyes narrowed and flashed red. He takes a step back and turns around, slamming his fist on a table before leaving through the back door. My colleague says, OP, what the freak? That was mean. I said, what? He asked me to. I think what alarms me the most is not necessarily OP's reaction. I mean, in the moment, if you get freaked out, a lot of people freeze up or they just kind of try to downplay it or look past it. What concerns me is that nobody else understood what was going on here and the fact that in the end, their reaction was, that was mean. Just total lack of awareness of what was going on. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, this has got to be the fourth or fifth time I've asked you to do this. No, actually you asked me once, per my records, that you asked me to start keeping since my performance review. I had a performance review on July 1st, and my boss told me that I have a hard time keeping track of tasks. It's really not my fault since the company's too cheap to invest in a task management solution. We literally have to go off massive email chains and when you have 30 people CC'd in an email with 25 of them not knowing the difference between reply and reply all, you end up with a lot of crap getting lost in the mix. Anyway, my boss told me that I needed to start keeping track of everything. Everything you say? Every phone call, every email, every bit of communication for every god dang task with timestamps because apparently i'm very forgetful and don't get anything done i'm normally never this petty but he gave me bad remarks across the board so i figured you know what i ain't going down without a fight especially when i'm being blamed for something that's not entirely my fault also i know i'm very effective as an employee because i get things done but my boss doesn't seem to know that so I spent the July 4th weekend developing a simple task manager to be used by only me. Every Vonage phone call gets automatically logged. Every email I receive, saved as a PDF and time stamped. Time received, time opened, time that I completed reading the email. Got a package you're sending me? I'm logging that crap too. Time the UPS slash FedEx driver delivered it. Time I brought it into the house. Time I opened the package. Time I threw out the packaging. I don't care if it takes me an extra hour each day, I'm logging everything. So today, he emails me saying, this has got to be the fourth or fifth time I've asked you to do so and so task. It was my freaking time to shine. I responded with this, boss name, in regards to the task in question, I've received the following communication. Tuesday, July 25th, 2023, 11.18 AM. Phone call received from boss phone asking me to complete this task. Then again at 12.08 p.m. Task sent for review, confirmed task pending review with your assistant. Emailed boss email reminding him that the task was pending review. Friday, August 4th, 2023 at 11.01 a.m. Email received from boss email asking me to this is the fourth or fifth time asking me to complete this task. Then at 11.02 a.m., Confirmed with boss's assistant that the task was still pending review. 11.03 a.m. Confirmed with boss's assistant that the task was never reviewed by boss. 11.04 a.m. Re-forwarded the email to the boss from July 5th, 2023 at 12.08 p.m. Reminding him that the task was pending review. You asked me once, and it was completed within the hour. If you asked me about this task four to five times, I would have told you three to four times that it was already pending review because it was completed the first time you asked. Asking me to keep a record of everything was a great idea because now I know that I am not the problem here. I haven't heard back from him since. You know what the most annoying thing here is? After all of that, when you prove them wrong? They just disappear. They just don't admit anything. They don't engage you further. They just poof and you don't really get any kind of like satisfactory closure. 
Our next story is, we want you to be more visible. More visible? You got it. The story happened a few years ago while employed as a police officer in a small rural 15-man department. Since being a cop, I've never had a strong desire to write tickets. Typically my limit was 15 miles per hour over before I would even consider issuing a citation, and that might result in a 5 over ticket. 10 and over would get a warning. I tended to focus on impaired or uninsured drivers. In the town was a lone stretch of roadway, couple of miles, leading straight to the nearest interstate. Using this road might take a few minutes off of your commute to home slash work, depending on the time of day. The road had a couple of very old homes, which had a comfortable distance from the roadway. Speed limit was 55, but not uncommon to see drivers going 15 over. We rarely got complaints. Unfortunately, one summer, we had an auto-pedestrian fatal accident. A driver was on their way to work in the early hours and hit a small child who wasn't supervised by their crappy parent. Speeding wasn't a factor in the tragedy. Following the tragedy, an order was given that we needed seriously enforcing the speeding in the area. The next following weeks, I stop anyone going over the speed limit, even a mile per hour over. Now, I still keep to my normal method of issuing tickets, meaning your speed needs to be excessive to get a ticket. Most of these stops consisted of me in informing them of the tragedy and the importance of us all driving more slowly. Most drivers are understanding and see what I'm trying to do except a few who file complaints for stopping cars for one mile per hour and inconveniencing them. I get told to tone back on my proactive enforcement and just be more visible. Great. Instead of looking for bigger issues or interacting with the community, they want me to just sit in my car. So for the next couple of nights, I park directly in front of City Hall with my steady burns on, when your lights are on but don't flash, for hours at a time. I make zero attempt at being a productive officer, and being a vigilant and dedicated employee, I even take photographs to send my supervisor to let me know I'm being visible. Needless to say, I get talked to about my attitude and told to go back to being the normal. Side note, my sergeant later resigned shortly after I did, after some super shady crap happened in the department. Before he left, he gave me an award for the most literal officer ever. I still have it. Super side note, I have another story about malicious compliance when I was told to ticket people for long weeds in people's yards. I mean, hey, I get it. OP's just enforcing what they're supposed to enforce. But I cannot tell you how annoyed I would be for getting pulled over for going a mile over. Shoot, I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably be extremely annoyed for getting pulled over for going five over. I'd feel like, oh, you're trying to get your quota, huh? Our next story is... Cable company would not fix my issue until it cost them money to fix it. Back in 2015, my cable company had terrible support. My cable modem would constantly reset itself and the technicians wouldn't help. The last one who came to my home was a jerk of a supervisor who told me that they do not guarantee Wi-Fi connection and if I had another technician come over that I would be charged $50 an hour for wasting their time. I had a quad play at the time, and that included home security. What I did was not connect the home security unit to my Wi-Fi, and instead use the Wi-Fi that was included with the security device. They did not like this because apparently it was costing them too much money, as their service provider of the home security was charging them money from the hour as the home security unit was using too much data. When they complained about me not using the home security device on the Wi-Fi of my router, I told them, why does it matter since you don't guarantee a Wi-Fi connection? Another supervisor came and actually found the issue and it was a bad line in my home and repaired it and now my router doesn't reset itself anymore. The look I gave the other supervisor when he told me that he apologizes for the other supervisor's behavior and that while they don't guarantee the speeds, they should be guaranteeing a proper signal to your device was a nice big grin. What annoys me the most about a lot of these terrible companies is not only do they have a monopoly in your area, so they tend to be pretty much the only choice you can have, it's when clearly your service is not performing as advertised. They give you the runaround, you contact their support and they say, 
Okay, well first of all, it's mandatory that you go through the same basic troubleshooting steps you would do any other time yourself to check if maybe it's a problem. You gotta sit there for 15 minutes resetting and restarting and swapping the cables and making sure they're connected before you can finally schedule something. Then they send somebody out and they say, nah, looks fine to me, charge her 60 bucks, and usually nothing happens. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.